What is happening right now? It seems like a simple question. You might be sitting in a chair reading these words. But what's happening right now at this very instant, two and a half million light years away in the Andromeda galaxy? You might imagine aliens getting ready for their morning commute, or maybe a star exploding in a brilliant supernova. The universe in your mind has a definite present moment that stretches everywhere, all at once. This is our intuition. It's what Isaac Newton believed, a universal clock, ticking away the same second for everyone, everywhere. But a brilliant patent clerk in Switzerland, Albert Einstein, turned this idea on its head. He showed us that the universe isn't so simple. There is no single universal now. Einstein's special theory of relativity, born from simple postulates about the speed of light, revealed something truly profound. It told us that space and time are not separate things. They are woven together into a single fabric, space-time. And this fabric can be stretched and warped. Your experience of time, your slice of the present moment, depends entirely on how you are moving through this cosmic fabric. Two people moving at different speeds or in different directions will have fundamentally different definitions of now for distant events. They will disagree on which events are happening simultaneously. This isn't an illusion or a trick of perception. It's a fundamental feature of the reality we inhabit. It's a mind-bending consequence of the fact that the speed of light is the ultimate speed limit for everyone. This concept is called the relativity of simultaneity. Let's imagine you and a friend are standing in the exact middle of a long train carriage. At the very same moment, lightning strikes both the front and the back of the carriage. Because you are in the middle, the light from both strikes reaches your eyes at the same time. You would rightly say those two events happen simultaneously, but now imagine an observer standing on the platform as your train speeds past. From their perspective, the train is moving towards the light from the front strike and away from the light from the rear strike. They will see the light from the front strike first. They would conclude, just as rightly, that the front was struck before the back. So, who is correct? you on the train or the observer on the platform. Einstein's genius was to realize that you both are. There is no absolute correct answer. Your now is personal to your frame of reference. This effect is tiny and unnoticeable in our everyday lives because we move so slowly compared to the speed of light. But when we consider the vast distances between galaxies, this seemingly small discrepancy blows up into something truly astonishing. This is where the Andromeda Paradox comes into play. It takes this strange feature of reality and applies it to our nearest galactic neighbor, forcing us to confront the true nature of time. It's a thought experiment that stretches our minds just as motion stretches space-time itself. The Andromeda Galaxy is our cosmic twin, a magnificent spiral of stars located about two and a half million light years away. This means the light we see from it tonight began its journey two and a half million years ago. So when we look at Andromeda, we are seeing its past. But the paradox isn't about looking into the past, it's about defining the present. Let's imagine two people standing on Earth. One person, let's call her Alice, is standing perfectly still. The other, Bob, starts walking at a gentle pace towards the Andromeda galaxy. According to our everyday intuition, they are both on Earth. So their now in Andromeda should be the same. But special relativity tells us something completely different and far more spectacular. Because Bob is moving, even at a walking pace, his frame of reference has changed. His slice of space-time, his plane of now, tilts ever so slightly compared to Alice's. Over the immense distance to Andromeda, this tiny tilt makes a colossal difference. For Alice, who is stationary, her present moment in Andromeda might correspond to, say, the year two and a half million on an Andromedian calendar. A particular set of events are happening now for her, but for Bob, walking towards the galaxy, his tilted plane of simultaneity slices through space-time at a different angle. His now in Andromeda is hundreds of years in the future compared to Alice's now. Now let's flip the script. Imagine Bob turns around and starts walking away from the Andromeda galaxy. The tilt of his space-time slice reverses. Suddenly, his plane of now cuts through a much earlier time in Andromeda's history. His present moment there might be hundreds of years in the past compared to Alice's. Think about what this means. By simply changing the direction of a leisurely stroll on Earth, a person can change which century is currently unfolding in a distant galaxy. One moment, the Andromedians might be living in a future we can't yet imagine. The next, they are in a past that has already happened from another perspective. 
All three observers, Alice standing still, Bob walking towards and Bob walking away, have a completely different version of Andromeda's present. This isn't just about what they see. The light from any of these nows won't reach us for another two and a half million years. This is about the actual physical definition of the present moment in a distant location. The paradox lies in our gut reaction. How can the present in Andromeda depend on which way I walk on Earth? It feels like it breaks something fundamental like causality. Could Bob see the Andromedian fleet launching an attack in his now and warn Alice whose now is still in their past? The answer, thankfully, is no. Information cannot travel faster than light. The consistency of physics is preserved, but our notion of a single shared present is shattered. To truly grasp this, we need to think in four dimensions. Imagine space-time as a giant loaf of bread. This loaf contains all of cosmic history, every event that has ever happened or ever will happen, from the Big Bang to the end of time, is a point inside this loaf. What you perceive as the present moment is just one slice of that loaf. For someone standing still on Earth, their slice is cut perfectly straight across. This slice contains Earth right now, the Moon right now, and a specific moment in Andromeda right now. It represents all of space at a single instant in time according to their clock. This is their plane of simultaneity. When you start moving, your knife tilts. The faster you move, the more your slice of space-time angles through the loaf. For someone walking towards Andromeda, their slice angles forwards in time as it extends towards the galaxy. So while their slice cuts through the now on Earth, it intersects a point far in Andromeda's future relative to the stationary person. Conversely, walking away from Andromeda tilts the slice backwards in time. The slice still passes through the now on Earth, but it intersects a point deep in Andromeda's past. Each person's motion defines a unique, valid slice of reality. There is no single correct way to slice the loaf of space-time. This effect is also connected to another famous consequence of relativity time dilation. When you move, your clock ticks slower relative to a stationary observer. This might seem to add another layer of confusion, but it's part of the same beautiful, self-consistent picture. Time dilation and the relativity of simultaneity are two sides of the same coin, both stemming from the geometry of space-time. Your tilted slice of now is a direct result of how space-time must configure itself to keep the speed of light constant for you, regardless of your motion. The laws of physics don't change, but our measurements of space and time must be flexible to accommodate this universal constant. So, uh, the Andromeda paradox isn't really a paradox in the sense of a logical contradiction. It's a paradox only because it clashes violently with our ingrained, earthbound intuition. Our brains evolve to deal with speeds much, much slower than light, where these relativistic effects are negligible. We never have to worry about our now being different from the person next to us, but the universe plays by a different set of rules on the grandest scales. Space-time is not a rigid stage, it is a dynamic entity, and our journey through it defines our personal reality. Every observer carries their own now with them through the cosmos. A key question arises from all this. If my now in Andromeda can be in their future, could I somehow send them a message that arrives before it was sent? Could I warn them of a disaster? The answer is a resounding no, and this is where the genius of Einstein's framework truly shines. The universe has a built-in safety net, the speed of light. No information, no signal, no cause can travel faster than light. The events in Andromeda that are in Bob's future now are not causally connected to him. He cannot influence them, nor can they influence him. They lie outside what we call his past light cone. Think of a light cone as your personal bubble of influence within space-time. It extends outwards from you into the future at the speed of light and backwards into the past. Only events within your past light cone can have affected you, and you can only affect events that lie within your future light cone. The different nows of the Andromeda Paradox all lie outside of each other's light cones. They are in a region called elsewhere. Alice Bob walking towards and Bob walking away can disagree on the order of events in this elsewhere region precisely because those events cannot causally affect one another. The order of causally linked events is absolute for everyone. A cup will always shatter after it is dropped. So, while different observers slice up space-time differently, they will all agree on the sequence of cause and effect. Physics remains perfectly consistent for every single observer. 
The Andromeda paradox doesn't break physics, it reveals its true deeper structure. It forces us to abandon the comforting idea of a universal present. Time is not a river that flows at the same rate for everyone. It's more like a landscape, and our motion determines the path we take through it. The paradox highlights that there is no privileged observer in the universe. Your reference frame, your slice of now, is just as valid as anyone else's. This thought experiment is a powerful reminder of how science pushes us to question our most basic assumptions. It takes the abstract mathematics of special relativity and brings it to life on a galactic scale, showing us the profound implications of a simple idea. The speed of light is constant. The universe is a far stranger and more wonderful place than our everyday experience suggests. Time is personal. The past, present and future are not as clear-cut as we once believed. And by simply taking a walk, you can shift the present moment of a galaxy hundreds of years into the past or future. That's a powerful thought delivered to you by the cosmos itself.